Very special guest with me who's in the studio this morning, and uh, I think my eyes are going to be opened up to some new things uh, with uh, my special guest who is here. Uh, He is here to talk about some programs uh, that he's hosting in Plainfield here. Uh, some things that could be beneficial to numerous, numerous people. Uh, My guest with me today is is Venerable Myung An, who is here. And uh, good morning. It's great to have you here today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, Your practice is Korean Zen, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Is is it based on kindness, like most uh, of these faiths are? Yeah, so uh, the main focus of Zen is to really, truly get to the bottom of who we are. You know, um, the main question that we forget, this is the search, this is the journey, the journey to be taken inward. Um, it is in the misunderstanding of who we are that we create so much unnecessary human suffering, you know, and the, the function and the process of, of returning to self, being reminded of who I am, and therefore understanding who you are as well, you know, bridges that gap that is uh, that we think exists between one and the other. Yeah, it's challenging to understand other people when you don't have the faintest idea about yourself, right? And I guess you you try to get people to be introspective, you know, discover who you are first, and yep. then take that understanding and 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 use it when, when you interact with other people. Absolutely, we're so pulled out of ourselves. We're yeah. we're constantly abducted out of our own sort of true home. And, and um, you know, we, we wake up at some point in time in our day or in our life having seen, you know, life pass by and yeah. not being a participant in our own life. It is a, it is a sad, sad way to realize, you know, our, yeah. uh, ourselves. About a year or so ago, someone sort of turned me on to the whole concept of mindfulness, and it was something that I never really gave a second thought to. But it was basically just having an awareness of every second of every day of where you are and and what's happening not only around you, but what's happening within you. Uh, And that's something that uh, if people would just pay a little bit more attention to it, the benefits are remarkable. Absolutely. And this is the only place and time that we can actually act and exist. You know, we we either live in a in a museum of our lives of yesterday Mm -hmm. or we live in some projected reality into tomorrow. And uh, never being participant in the present moment, but only here and now is when we can do anything, when we can act, when we can think. Uh, of course, we plan for the future, but we don't lose ourselves in in the sort of fantasy of it. It's true. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't get your opinion and your take on uh, events around the world. Of course, that we're waking up today to another horrific mass shooting that yes. happened uh, overnight in New Zealand, where two mosques uh, were attacked and. In, in coordinated attacks and, and we're, the death toll is still climbing we were all, almost 50 people dead when you look around the events of the world overnight that are just geared by pure hatred yes what, what kind of goes through your mind when you hear about things like this when people are just killed because of who or what they believe in right so we're, we're looking to the belief to be outside all the time and this is the thing again it's about returning to our true nature returning to yourself when you understand who you are you understand that the other feels as you feel and and uh, bleeds as you bleed. And it's an unfortunate reality that somehow we think that their blood is different and that their pain is different. It is not different. And we do this, unfortunately, um, everywhere. You yeah. know, we create these separations because we, it's, it's, a, it's a function and a work of our ego mind. And, and we, again, as, as much as we are abducted, in a sense, by external circumstances of our lives, we can be abducted by the internal function of our own ego and, and lose ourselves in that. So, it, unfortunately, but it is people who have lost themselves to themselves. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what you offer uh, in Plainfield there, uh, you have some programs where you, meditation is uh, a, a, an important part of what you do. Uh, finding inner peace, uh, healing arts, there's a lot of things at play here. Uh, yes. where you Basically, it's almost like people just get this, we need to hit the reset button once in a while. Yep. We need to just kind of like recharge the old batteries. And it sounds like this is what you're offering people, where you maybe open their eyes and give them a little new perspective of the world around them. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, everything in life can be sort of uh, um, meditative and introspective. We teach meditation. You know, we have right now we have a banner hanging at the front of the Zen Center that says, I stress about stress before there's even stress to stress about. <laughs> <laughs> Sums up the lives uh, of a lot of people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, and um, so as far as the meditation practice, uh, you know, we, we have now um, modern research that points to all of the benefits of meditation practice, psychological, physiological, spiritual, and otherwise. 
Uh, of course, from our perspective, meaning from the Zen monk perspective, we've been doing this research, uh, you know, human research for 2,500 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we look at all the traditions of the world that have uh, implemented meditation, thousands of years of research and, and, and proof you know, um, but because we we are in the world that we live in, everything is now a sort of sub subject to scientific method, yeah. and which is fine because it gives validity to things that that need to uh, be sort of uh, put out, put on a pedestal for having survived thousands of years uh, and doing great work for humanity. I think pills and shots have a role in helping people, but yes. uh, you know what? That's there's a lot more to it than that. Right, it and goes beyond health. Goes beyond uh, traditional medicines. You're right. Right, and the preventative aspect of it mm -hmm. is is huge. You know, and, and, and unfortunately, that uh, is something that we are in lack of, uh, the, the preventative approach. You know, we Western medicine is great for what it does, but it is a, a trauma-based medicine. You know, there isn't much that it, that it is offered in terms of preventative. You know, and that's why I think the, the, the big interest in the ancient traditions, whether it's meditation or Tai Chi or martial arts or whatever health exercises that, that we're utilizing, um, it really is uh, beneficial in, in preventing, you know, before yeah. we actually get to the point you where... You can't we're... deny the benefits uh, of what this offers. There, there's no doubt about it. You have a calming influence about you. You've brought down the tension in this room the second you set foot in here, by the way. <laughs> Just want to make you. sure everybody knows that. Venerable Yang An is here. Uh, he's got some wonderful programs uh, at his, uh, his his place. Is it a center? How should I address where you... Where a zen you... center? A zen center. Yes. I love that. It's in Plainfield. And it's a variety of programs, uh, things like healing arts and meditation, uh, finding inner peace, uh, stress reduction, uh, even some great after-school programs that your kids are absolutely going to love as well. And uh, everything really from, from chess to martial arts is what you offer, uh, especially kids uh, and the grown-ups at your place, right? That is yeah. correct. So the, we, we think of chess as a uh, sport for the mind. But, yeah. But the reason why we chose chess in particular is we're trying to teach children wisdom. Uh, namely, wisdom has this beautiful sort of time travel ability. It's being in a in a present moment where, as we mentioned, we could that's the only place we can be, but making decisions based not only on the present moment but the repercussions of your actions. So sure. to sort of j travel in time forward into seeing these actions, what it is that they're going to bring detriment or benefit to me. And the way we we teach this in a sort of uh, experiential way to children is through the the game of chess and the way we we teach it is if you touch a piece if you touch a chess piece you have to move that chess piece now if you haven't given enough thought to which piece you're going to touch and where you're going to place it you may just end up having to move it because those are the rules right having to move it into a place of detriment to you so that is to say when we interact with the world when the children touch upon the world what impact are they going to make upon it? So we have, you know, so it, it teaches them hopefully firsthand uh, to consider before you say something to somebody, before you whatever push somebody, or before you say something lovely to somebody, know that there is a repercussion. Know that there's something that's going to come out of that. We call that karma. Yeah, uh, the, cause oh, yeah. And the cause and effect type of thing. Um, and then the martial arts aspect again. It's um, what. What we have to realize as parents uh, is that we cannot walk around the world and shave off every sharp corner of the world. You know, uh, oftentimes parents think that that is the way to protect the children. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have, we're not Santa Claus. We can't go around the world and do that all in one night. So right. what can right. we do is we can, we can give the children an inner compass that, you know, inner strength and a, and a belief in themselves. You know, the, the, the belief that I can and the belief that I have the strength to make my own decisions, not given to peer pressure. And of course, and you know, gives them movement. So the sort of discharge some of the extra energy so they go go home and chill out a little. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, we see people, young people particularly, that have studied martial arts over the years. They just uh, go on to lead lives where there's, there's patience and kindness and an understanding and a clarity that I don't think not the rest of the world has. So there's right. long-term benefits to to what you're offering. There's no question. Yes, and it's not only about, you know, we teach Taekwondo curriculum, so it's not only about kicking and punching. Mm -hmm. There is, you know, our children, if they want to take a belt promotion test where they move to a new rank, they have to do community service. 
Okay. You know, they have to bring in the report card because we're not trying to create wow. gangsters. We're trying to create participating uh, human beings who can participate in society and contribute to the society. Yeah. Uh, so there's a variety of programs. Uh, is it Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday across those four days? You, you offer a bunch of things? Yes. So okay. Saturday is sort of floaty depending on, on which Saturday sure, of the week. Sure, sure. Okay. Yes. And uh, a midday program that's continuing also for another couple of days, uh, Experience the Power of the Peaceful Warrior. So this is mm-hmm. something that somebody could just, uh, you, know, you know, come on over on their lunch break before they go to lunch. You know, they're having a bad morning. They had meetings. They have a million emails waiting for them. This is their chance to just kind of come over and uh, catch their breath a little bit and, yes. and relax and have a sort of a, a new look at things before they head back to the rest of their day. And this is uh, Monday and Wednesday at 11 in the morning at the That's Zen correct. Center. Yes. And this is this is a sort of midday sample of the programs that we offer in the evenings, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, seven to eight, we have the same uh, similar program we call Healing Arts. Mm -hmm. And the Healing Arts are based on um, uh, the principles of Oriental medicine. So the 12 meridians and the the acupuncture lines that that run through the body according to the Oriental medicine, where you put a pressure uh, either through acupressure or acupuncture or even muscle tension. You put a pressure on a combination of acupuncture points that then elicits a specific physiological response. So they're preventative slash quote unquote therapeutic, um, you know, and, and the, the, the gamut spans from, you know, constipation to backache to weak knees to what have you. Sure, sure. Yeah. Excellent. And if someone is interested in the in the Peaceful Warrior programs or anything else that you offer, uh, how, how's the best way to, to get started? So they can, you know, they could give us a call. Um, we have the um, 908. Yep, 377. 377- 9803, that's the number they should call? Yes, okay. and also our website has information at that soshimsa.org. S-O-S-H-I-M-S-A dot org. That is correct. I like the way you say it better. <laughs> so, so soshimsa dot yes. org. Okay. Uh, really something for everybody. And if it opens up your eyes this much, a, a little bit, and it's, it's worth every moment of your life, that's for sure. Uh, to get involved with this. Uh, about a minute left, and I have to thank you for this absolutely beautiful gift that you brought here. I'll, I'll put it on the webcam so people can kind of see what this is. This is a beautiful uh, necklace, if you will. Talk about, is this is these wood beads, and what the, do they, they represent? Are, they are wood beads. There are okay. 108 of them, and there's a mathematical uh-huh. equation that uh, takes the six consciousnesses, namely your eye, ear, nose, mouth, body, and mind consciousness. And uh, the contact they make against the world and the response they produce, namely positive, negative, or neutral. And that could happen in past, present, and future. So there's a mathematical equation that arrives at the 108, meaning when we bump into the world. I mean, I've had people that wear them when they drive, when they're white knuckling the steering wheel, you know, to mm-hmm. remind them as they, you know, as they look at the wrist or what have you, and, and they remind themselves, okay, just take it easy. You know, re, you, you are reacting to the world, mm-hmm. not acting on it. Not in a way that you are in a driver's seat of your life, but you're allowing life to just roll you over and you're just flapping around. Yeah, this is what I need to remind myself that, uh, you know what, I do have a fair amount of control of what's uh, what's happening around me. We have all the control in the world, <sighs> and right. we should not surrender it to somewhere outside right. of ourselves. You're right. I can't thank you enough for this this beautiful my gift pleasure. here. I'm, I'm going to wear it in the parade tomorrow, I think. So And good luck. Keep my and, mind um, at ease. Right, staying right. on the float. I, I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll ever have that happen again. But uh, but so wonderful to have you here today. Uh, Venerable Myung An, it was great meeting you, and uh, you're offering a very valuable service. And I think once people find out what this is about um, they'll tell their friends, and uh, it's it's about making lives better and making the world better, and that's exactly what you're doing on a, a second by second basis. So, so thank you for being here today, and it was yes, uh, really an honor to meet you. And uh, congratulations, and good luck with everything going ahead. All right, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much.